Okay, fractions with common or like denominators. 8.2b, using appropriate operation to solve problems involving rational numbers in a problem situation. Again, objective one of our star concept. Key vocabularies, order of operation, like terms, numerator, denominator. Well, what do we have going for us? According to our rules, to add fractions or subtract fractions with a common denominator, we write the sum or difference of the numerator over that common denominator. Example, 3 over 9 plus 5 over 9 will equal, let's go ahead and common denominator is 9, there's our 9, it says we write the sum, so here we are adding 3 plus 5 is 8, and uh, always remember that you simplify if possible in this situation, it cannot be simplified. Let's take a look at another one. We have, and this one will involve subtraction. So we have 3 over 5 minus 2 over 5. Again, common denominator, 5, and hey, let's take this and say 3 because we're doing same, opposite, opposite, so 3 plus a negative 2, and that means we can use our addition rules, uh, which tells us if our signs are opposite small is absolute value which is 2 subtract it from the largest absolute value which is 3 and we will get again 1 and our common denominator which is 5 okay not very hard uh, we just need to um, first thing understand what the adding rules are and then understand what the subtraction rules of integers are because they will apply to our numerator again denominator will stay the same and it's just our numerator now what about these mixed numbers so if we are going to add or subtract um, negative fractions of mixed numbers then you have to apply the rules of integers. You have to. And uh, for example, no matter how you interpret the signs, but I want you to interpret them as follows. If you got a negative 11 over 13, that will equal to a negative 11 over 13. Remember me telling you that? Or 11 over a negative 13 either one of those but I really 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 would like for you to apply this to the numerator because that's what we're going to be working with and let's see let's take a look at this too let's say if we have a negative 5 and 6 over 7 what that is telling us that equals to a negative 5 and it equals to a negative 6 over 7. That's why when you see me adding them, and I don't subtract, but I definitely know that both the whole number and the remainder are the numerator. Okay? Uh, it's uh, uh, negative. Or we could say if we have a negative 5, 6 over 7, we could say a negative 5 plus a negative 6 over 7. I think that makes more sense to you. All right, so we've taken a look at fractions uh, with
common denominators. Now let's take a look at mixed numbers. Okay, so we did put that 13 down here. Let's just go ahead and use it. We'll go ahead and change the color so we'll, we'll know that we, we, all, we are about to work some problems. So we have a negative 11 over 13 and that's going to be plus 8 over 13. Now again that's our denominator. It's common in both. It's common. It's right there. 13. Now we will take our numerators which is a negative 11 and that's plus 8. So now we apply our rules of integers. So if we do, we see that 8 is our largest absolute value, I'm sorry, smallest absolute value, and we'll subtract it from a negative 11 or 11, which is our largest absolute value, and we will get 3. And that's going to be 3 over 13, but because that is a negative 11, then our sign for our uh, actual uh, sum will be negative. Okay, just make sure you keep that in mind. Now let's take a look at one more. We have a negative. 5 and 6 over 7 plus 3 and 2 over 7. Well, when we are dealing with these mixed numbers here with like uh, denominators or uh, common denominators, we can just literally separate this and uh, add whole number first so we can have a negative 5 and then that's minus 6 over 7 and that's going to be plus 3 and I'm going to put this down here if you don't mind plus 2 over 7. So we have actually, let me go ahead and make this a little bit clearer for you. So that'll be a negative 5 plus 3 minus 6 over 7 plus 2 over 7 and that will give us, well, what do we have? Negative 5 plus 3, let's subtract 3. That will give us 2, but 5 is the largest absolute value, so that's a negative 2. Now we look at a negative 6 and a positive 2, subtract that. That's going to give us 4 over 7, but of course, that's negative as well because as you can see if that 5 is negative that 6 is going to be negative 2 so now we have a negative 2 and 4 7 for our final answer I mean don't get confused just make sure that you understand what the little rules are and how they apply well let's see can we grow a couple of more on here for you. Um, sure, we can. Seems like I have a little room. So let's take a look at. Oh, here's a good one. Three over four plus seven over four plus five over four. Okay, 4, common denominator. We are adding 3 plus 7 plus 5. 
Okay, 3 plus 7 is 10 plus 5. That's going to give us 15 over 4. Well, we can uh, reduce or simplify by dividing 4 into 15. And, of course, that's 3. And 3 times 4 is 12. Uh, and we're going to subtract 12 from 15. And that's going to give us 3. So we have 3 and 3 4 for our answer. Uh, hmm. Here's one I think we need to try as well. We have... 15 over 8 minus 7 over 8 plus 3 over 8. Okay? Well, what do we do? We take 7. Well, let's change it. I, I, I think we need to change this. So let's go ahead and take... 15 over 8 plus a negative 7 over 8 plus 3 over 8. And now we can see it. We can do two things here. We can add the 15 and 3 and make this actually, yeah, let's do that. We can add the 15 and 3 and make this 11 over 8 and then that will be plus a negative 7 over 8 and now we can just simply subtract um, when did I get 15 over 8? Ah, that's 18 over 8. Why didn't you tell me? It's going to let me work the problem and work the problem and Knowing I'm working it incorrectly, just speak up. So that's 15 plus 3 is 18 over 8. Now when we take a negative 7 and add it to it, of course, we're going to subtract 7 from 18. And we get a final answer of 11 uh, over 8, which can be reduced to 1 and three eights so pretty different type problems of what we worked but you need to see those problems and understand if the denominator is common if it's common then we will only add or subtract the numerators and we'll do so just like we did when we were adding integers okay adding or subtracting integers all right stay tuned and i will give you some problems see how we do it